What's going on, everybody? We are back with another fantasy football um, episode. <laughs> I keep blanking on that. I don't know why. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about my week one or after week one, my top targets to pick up for fantasy football. So these are kind of guys that you could potentially find on the waiver wire, depending on how deep your league is. Um, so to kind of kick it off, my very first person is kind of like a slash. So it's Jonathan Taylor, I assume he's drafted in most, um, slash Naeem Hines. It's really Naeem Hines. Um, as you can see here, Naeem Hines is only rostered in about 36.7% of the leagues. And if you look at his stats, he's not going to do much as a runner. Uh, he's going to do a little bit more now that Marlon Mack is out. Um, and this is kind of why I say slash Taylor. I know I said, if you watched uh, my other fantasy videos, um, I was kind of down on Jonathan Taylor at first, but I did preface it that if Marlon Mack gets injured, then you got to have Jonathan Taylor. Unfortunately, Marlon Mack got a season ending injury. Jonathan Taylor is probably going to be their starter, but where you need Naeem Hines is eight catches, 45 yards and a touchdown. I think he's going to get about six, an average of at least six catches a game. I, I know Jonathan Taylor got a lot more catches than I initially thought, which is surprising. Um, I'll give it to him. I didn't think he had the hands, but where he is really going to make noise is that uh, the the receiving game. That That is really where he's going to play. That's going to kind of be his bread and butter. So if you are a PPR league, highly recommend Naeem Hines. He's probably my second or third of person to pick up. Um, I just, I think he'll have a role no matter what. So I, I, I think you got to pick him up. Uh, my next person is, um, De uh, oh, I did forgot to preface this. this. So this is in no specific order. Uh, this is just kind of, I think it's about 11 or 12. I may throw in a 12th um, of people or players that I think you guys should pick up or kind of be on the lookout for. Um, again, this is in no particular order. I'll probably say my top guys. Like I said, nine times probably my second, um, but this is in no particular order. Just wanted to preface that. Um, and this is for fantasy perspective. So <laughs> also these are not like um, how I think they'll do in real life. Or I guess it is. It's not uh, like how I'd rank them. Just want to preface that as well. So second player is Deontay Johnson with the Pittsburgh Steelers. If you did not watch my sleepers video, make sure you watch my sleepers video. I am very high on Deontay Johnson. I know he is rostered in about 84%. So he, in most of the leagues, he will be on a team. Um, but if you are in an eight, eight, eight team league and potentially even a 10 and people just don't know who he is, you need to go pick him up, have to go pick him up. He didn't have an explosive week one, but he is by far the Pittsburgh Steelers second best receiver. If you want to hear more about my Steelers recap, <laughs> I hate to keep plugging my stuff. Uh, go watch my Steelers and week one recap though as well. Um, but he is by far the Pittsburgh Steelers second best receiver. Not close. He will have a lot of intermediate and underneath routes and he could take them for six really at, at any given time. He's pretty explosive. But if again, if you're a PPR league, He's going to be a solid guy that you can bank for about five to six receptions, anywhere between 50 to 100 yards. I mean, it's not spectacular, but it's. I think he's going to be very, very consistent, and that's why I have him as. Um, that's why I have him on this list of guys you got. You got to make sure that you have an eye on or are picking up. Um, my third person is Benny Snell for the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. Uh, I hope this is not just a entirely Pittsburgh Steelers list. Um, but the reason I have Benny Snell on here, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Steelers running backs, honestly. Um, I, I think that they could do a lot better. But Benny Snell is clearly the se the second runner, second running back um, on the team behind James Conner. Also, James Conner is hurt. I know he is expected, or not, not expected, but he's not ruled out for week two. So that's always a plus. Um, but if you have James Conner or if James Conner is out, I would make sure you pick up Benny Snell because he's clearly our second favorite running back. And although I'm not very high on him, I, I just, I think he's a great player. 
Um, it kind of fits the Steelers perfectly, but I don't. I think we need more speed. But that's for another. Like I said, watch my re- Steelers recap if you want to hear more about that. But as a fantasy perspective, if you have James Conner, need him. Um, you need Benny Snell because unfortunately James Conner is hurt a decent amount, and Benny Snell is only rostered in 14.6% of the leagues. So that's almost none. So especially if you're a deeper t- a deeper league, you could probably find him on the on the block. Um, so I would make sure to pick him up. Uh, my next person is, if I could type, is Corey Davis. So a lot of people just assumed that AJ Brown was going to be the clear number one. Oh. Let's stop that scan. Sorry about that. I uh, had a McAfee scan for a second. Um, ignore that. But a lot of people just penciled in A.J. Brown, and I, I think he's going to be a great player. You can't really just have one receiver. You need another guy, and Corey Davis, I know it's just one week. He finally played well, and he was their number one target, which was sh- shocking. Um, so he... Seven seven receptions, 101, no touchdowns, but seven catches. I think he was targeted a total of nine times, if I remember correctly. Seven of eight. Eight targets. I was one off. Um, and he's only rostered in 3.9% of the leagues. That's also almost nothing. So if you need wide receiver depth and you're in a deeper league, I would pick him up. Just give him a shot. You know, maybe not start him. Let him kind of see what he could do. But... Keep him on your bench because if he continues to be their number one target, we saw how A.J. Brown kind of exploded onto the scene. The Titans, with their play-action pass and their running threat, they're going to get some favorable matchups. So I think Corey Davis is a guy that you really – you might be able to kind of sneak him. Like, I don't think too many people will be high on him. So you might be able to get him and just let him sit on your bench for one or two more weeks and kind of see how things go and kind of go from there, but I I would make sure to kind of keep an eye on him, especially for the deeper leagues. My next player is Cam Newton. Um, This one isn't as much of like, uh, because he's he's rostered in 85% of the leagues. It's Cam Newton. Everyone knows him, but if you are in like an eight or 10 person league, he may not be rostered um, just because there's probably, or what people thought was 10 better quarterbacks. But the reason I have I'm a really high on him is because of the running threat. The Patriots, again, I touched on this in my week one recap. Make sure you <laughs> watch that. They completely changed their offense, and it looks a lot like Cam Newton's first three years with the Panthers. I mean, he had 15 carries, 75 yards, and two touchdowns running. He's not going to wow you passing, but the running is huge in fantasy football. So I would keep him... Kind of, if you can, if he's not rostered, I would keep an eye on him and maybe stash him on your bench for favorable matchups, especially if you don't have an elite uh, quarterback one. So he's on my list. My number one, and I've seen him on a lot of people's, um, like Matthew Berry and a lot of people's lists, is Malcolm Brown. He, I I don't know if, the the reason I'm, um, he is still my number one. I would definitely make sure you go and pick him up. But I'm a little bit more hesitant on him is just because they the the Rams, they definitely did have kind of like a three running back system. It was Cam Akers played a decent amount. Malcolm Brown probably played second. Then Daryl Henderson was third. But Malcolm Brown got almost all of the goal line touches. I don't know if they just don't trust Cam Akers yet down at the goal line. But, I mean, you can see his numbers, 18 carries, 79 yards, two touchdowns. The 79 yards eight on 18 carries, it's good. It's not going to wow you, you know, but the two touchdowns is where he really made his presence. Like I said, he got, I think, just about every goal line carry. I'm, I'm sure he it wasn't every single one, but it felt like it. And he actually got some, um, as you can see, some some plays in the passing game uh, with three catches, 31 yards. Not spectacular. It's not really what he's going to give you, but... He's going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of the goal line touches. So I would make sure to go pick him up, especially if you have Cam Akers, um, because you don't really know how that situation is going to play out just yet. Um, My next guy is 
James Robinson, if I could spell that. There we go. He make sure to go pick him up. He is getting picked up in a lot more leagues. He got the most carries by far. Um, I think oh, I cannot remember how many. I was very high on Chris um, Chris Thompson. I don't think he's going to have as big of an impact or in the running game, which is kind of what I expected. But um, Chris Thompson will have a lot of catches, which may hurt James Robinson. But James Robinson was by far their number one running back in terms of carries. 16 carries, 62 yards, not crazy. Only one reception, so he's not really passing, not really in the passing game. But if you are in a deeper league, running backs are extremely hard to find. This is a guy that you want to at least take a flyer on and see how things go. Um, he had a pretty good week one, so I would, I would, I would take a flyer on him. I'm, I'm kind of looking for him as well in, in a lot of my leagues. Uh, my next person is Peyton Barber. If again, if I can spell that, um, <laughs> I was also similar situation. Was very high on Antonio Gibson. I still am. He will have a lot of. Pass, uh, receiving yards and, and pass catches. So if it's your PPR, look out for Antonio Gibson. Um, but Peyton Barber also got by far the most amount of carries. 17 carries, I know, for just 29 yards. Two touchdowns, though. So he's going to be their goal line guy. He He's not very explosive, so I don't expect him to continue to get as many carries as he did. But again, another goal line guy that he's going to eat away from touchdowns. So if you later in the later in the year, if you are struggling with injuries at running back or your league is very deep, he could be a guy that you just plug in and hope he scores. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of times with running backs, that's kind of what you got to do, like especially later in the year if you didn't draft, you know, your first two picks at running back. So he's he's on my list to kind of watch out for or not watch out for, but just have an eye out because he'll be a goal line guy. Um, my next player is LaVisca Sinault, if I can, there we go, so he's only rostered in 7.7, .7, so almost no one has him, not a crazy week one, three catches for 37 yards and a touchdown, but he got some carries as well, which two carries, you know, that, that'll boost his stats occasionally, um, but he is going to be they're kind of like they're underneath to media, media or intermediate. He's kind of going to be their Deontay Johnson, but not as good, much more on like the, the uh, trick play kind of style. So he, he's behind DJ Chark. He's their most explosive athlete. He's better than DD Westbrook, um, in my opinion. So I would, I would kind of have him as a potential just pick up and stash. Because I think as he gets more comfortable in the offense, he'll have more and more roles. I think they may do a lot of sweeps with him. They may even line him up at running back some plays. He's going to be kind of all over the field and a lot of kind of dink and dunk to him or intermediate routes, and he could break them. So I, I would I would keep an eye on him. Maybe not pick him up this week, but it may be one week too late in terms of this guy. So I, I would uh, just keep an eye out. Maybe pick him up if you have a deeper – or if your team is – you had a couple injuries week one and you need to fill out fill out your roster, pick them up, stash them on your bench. And my final player is Rodney – well, nope, I did not – not Rodney. I'm blanking on his name. The Jets receiver, or was the Jets receiver, Roby Anderson. Why did I say Rodney Anderson? Um, Roby Anderson is my, um, actually does not round out my list. The, uh, I have another Jets receiver I think I skipped over. <laughs> but uh, Roby Anderson, he played really well and was kind of by far their number one. And he can explode. He's kind of like Will Fuller in terms of, he could have six catches for 40 yards, uh, but he could also have six catches for 115 and a touchdown, you know. So he's kind of a boomer bust guy, but I think with the the lack of weapons besides uh, – or DJ Moore is their number one and kind of will be their number one throughout the season. He just had a better week. Um, but 
He's going to be their big play guy. So, again, if you need depth, he could be a very good option for you. Uh, he's only rostered in 70%, so majority, but he's he'll be he'll be there on, on some on some leagues. Um, but yeah, good player. But this is the guy that I accidentally skipped over is Jamison Crowder. That's what I was kind of blanking. And I was like, why am I thinking Jets? Um, but Jamison Crowder is probably my third behind Malcolm Brown and and Hines. Um, and actually fourth, because I like Deontay Johnson. He's, he's my, but my boy. So Jameson Crowder is up there on my list of who to pick up this week. I know he's rostered at 81% of the leagues. Um, but again, if you're in a eight or 10 team league, he, he may be on there. Um, but he had a baller week one, seven receptions for 115 and a touchdown. Again, he is him and Denzel Mims. If you watched my, um, kind of rookies to be on the lookout for. I had Denzel Mims. They, the Jets offense just doesn't have too much talent. They have Chris Hernan who played pretty well, but on as receivers, their receiving core is pretty bad. So I think Darnold is kind of going to be forced to throw it to Crowder. And I think eventually Mims will get to play, but for now Crowder is by far their number one receiver. So I, I'm pretty high on him to kind of keep maybe not the 115 production, but I think he'll be there in terms of targets, their number one guy. So I would I would be on the lookout for him, especially for PPR formats, um, as I just copied and pasted that from <laughs> from uh, ESPN. But especially for PPR, because of his targets, he may not explode because he's kind of let, almost like Will Fuller, not as much kind of boomer bust player, but he's going to get the targets. So um, that kind of rounds out my list. I think that's, what, 12? Uh, players there for you, <laughs> but uh, that rounds out my list of week one guys or going into week two who I'd be on the lookout for to pick up potentially. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll make sure to comment, like, subscribe. I will, you know, be coming out with more fantasy stuff, more just my recaps of the NFL season, and um, would love to hear, you know, other players that you guys are kind of keeping an eye out for. And as always, you know, make sure to comment and and, and like the video and, um, you know, for subscribe for, for new content coming up. I'm going to try to keep it as in, interactive and as active. So I want to kind of be on top of most of the news as best if I can. So a lot of NFL stuff. And if you like the NBA, I'll have some stuff there as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. I've my outro rambled on for way too long. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.